Welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'm gonna show you how to turn your leftover veggie scraps into homemade vegetable broth using your Instant Pot. This is seriously so easy to do and it's a great way to reuse your food waste so that nothing goes to waste. If you're new here, I make healthy recipe videos and meal prep videos, so make sure you subscribe to your my channel if you're new and make sure you give this video a thumbs up to help support my channel. And let's just jump into today's video. I'll show you what I like to use in my veggie broth and some things to avoid. And let's just get right on into it. Okay, so here's my collection of veggie scraps. This is just from a week's worth of making dinners and from meal prepping. You can throw these in the freezer if you want to like collect more veggie scraps, but I feel like I get so many within just a week that I just like don't even bother putting it in the freezer. So this is what I'm gonna be adding in. I have some like bell pepper pieces, some onion skins, um, carrot peels, some green onions. You only wanna use veggie scraps that are still like good. Don't use anything that's like going bad or like rotting. Um, I have some apple cores that I thought might add like a sweetness to my broth. So I'm gonna try out adding those in. The ends of some green onions, some more peppers. You can really use like anything that you have. Some things that you don't wanna use are cruciferous veggies like cabbage, broccoli, leafy greens. Those will give your broth like a bitter taste, so don't use any of that. But other than that, you can really use like whatever you want. When I make my veggie broth, I also like to add in a few additional garlic cloves and some bay leaves. So I'll show you how to do it. It is so easy. I have a bunch of these broken bay leaf pieces that I'm gonna add in. And you know these skinny little garlic pieces that like are too hard to cut up and use in a recipe? I like to throw these in my veggie broth. So this is an Instant Pot Lux. This is like one of the older original models, but all I do is press the soup broth button and it'll pressure cook for 60 minutes. And then after that, I do a natural release, which takes another like 30-ish minutes. I only do it for an hour because after that, everything is kind of mushy and flavorless anyways. So I find that that's all you really need. So yeah. Okay, so it's been about two hours since I started my veggie broth. The pressure has released naturally, so I'm just gonna take off the lid. And this is how our veggie broth turned out. I'm just gonna go ahead and strain it out and pour it into these glass jars. And at this point, the veggies are completely flavorless and mushy. All the flavor has gone into the liquid. Also, if you want a darker colored broth, use more onion skins and garlic skins, and that will give you a darker broth. But if you want a clear broth, don't use any garlic and onion skins. I can't wait to see how it tastes. It's like every batch, you never know how it's gonna turn out. Okay, so to strain out your veggie broth, I like to use a big bowl to catch all the liquid and then use a mesh strainer. And then you can use the back of a spoon to really push the excess liquid out. And now the leftovers can go in your compost pile. Okay, so here's all the veggie broth that I made with this batch. And this batch tastes really good. It tastes a lot like bell peppers and carrots. This would be like $8 at least 
worth of veggie broth that we just got for free basically. I'm thinking about freezing some because I don't think I can make stuff with four jars of veggie broth within the week. So I'll probably stick this in the freezer or like if I knew how to can, I feel like maybe you could can it. I don't know, I've never canned before. Next up, I have another recipe for a lemongrass ginger, like Thai style veggie broth that I'll share with you. Okay, you guys, well, it's a week later. I've gathered some more scraps to make another batch of veggie broth. I have another bowl of scraps, pretty much the same thing that I used in my last recipe. Some apple cores, green onion, some bell pepper pieces, um, a little bit of carrot scraps. And in this recipe, I'm gonna shave off a whole bunch of ginger to give it like a gingery flavor. I'm also gonna add these Thai chilies. I also bought some lemongrass from Pavilions. So yeah, let's make my lemongrass ginger broth. Oh, and I also have some mushroom pieces that I'm gonna add in here. So I think that'll give it a nice flavor. Okay, for my Thai chilies, I'm going to cut them in half to get more flavor out of them. And for the lemongrass, I just roughly chopped it up into big pieces. It's really tough and hard to cut through, so be careful. Let's add in the Thai chilies, all of the lemongrass. This is three stalks. And for the ginger, I just rinsed this off and I'm just gonna add in some shavings. I'm just gonna shave some into my Instant Pot to get nice strips. I wanna add some more garlic, so I'm gonna chop up some garlic cloves and add that in about eight cups of water. And for my lemongrass ginger broth, I did the same exact thing, soup broth button for 60 minutes with a natural release. And this one came out really flavorful, but a little bit too spicy. So I think next time I would do a little bit less ginger and chili pepper. When I go to serve this broth, I'm gonna add some miso paste and a little bit of date syrup to sweeten it up. And I think that will balance out the flavors really well and be so delicious. I also don't add any salt to my veggie broth, so that way when I use it in a recipe, I can control the sodium levels better. So I just prefer to make unsalted broth with just veggies and herbs. And it will be the perfect broth for a lemongrass veggie soup. And that is it for this video. Thanks for joining me to make my veggie broth. I will see you in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!